Get ready for an hour filled with conspiracies, UFOs, ghosts, the paranormal, legends and myths from around the world. Chasing Prophecy Radio, where the paranormal is supernatural. With your hosts, Sean Kelly, Jenny Nicasio. Welcome to the Chasing Prophecy Radio, and here are your hosts, Sean and Jenny. Good evening from the Keystone State. Welcome to Chasing Prophecy on the UF Paranormal Radio Network, 107.1 FM, New Orleans, where we discuss anything and everything beyond the scope of normal. I'm Jenny Nicassi, along with my co-host, Sean Kelly. Remember to like us on Facebook and Instagram. Welcome, welcome, welcome. Tonight's show is sponsored by Phantom Hounds Paranormal. They have been in the pursuit of all things spooky and never turned down a chance to look into new places. If you or someone has something they cannot explain going on, Phantom Hounds will love to hear from you. Like them on Facebook and check out their website at www.phantomhounds.com. Hey, Sean, how are you tonight? I'm doing great. How about yourself? I'm hanging in there. I love this time of year. It's almost fall and Halloween. It's just mm -hmm. around the corner and I'm excited. I love that crisp feel in the air. How about you? Same thing. Yeah. Uh, I was thinking about that today when I went to work, um, how, how nice it was. And even the last, last week, it was nice, you know, knowing that Halloween is coming. So. Yes, Halloween. I'm happy. Yes, I got to, you know, rev up the old broom, you know. <laughs> <laughs> you had a pair. What style broom do you um, have? It's a 350 Magnum. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> I'm teasing. I'm not a witch. Although I play one on TV. Okay. You had a paranormal investigation. Uh, where was it? It was at um, Blue Miss Road at North Park, Pennsylvania. Blue Miss and, Road, uh, huh? Blue Miss Road. And uh, it was fun. We had uh, about eight people there, and um, we just walked the road. In fact, my legs hurt because <laughs> it's like three miles down and three miles back, and I ain't used to that. <laughs> yeah, uh, and, and it's, a, but, it's at night, right? Yes, it is, and it's very, very dark back here. And, and spooky. Uh, very very spooky what, is, what was crazy yeah about, tell me what uh, the um what's the story behind blue mist road the story behind blue mist road at one time before north park became a uh, a park um it was farmland it was, it was a one big farm and uh according to the stories and stuff like that there were a lot of hangings back there in the um down the road about two miles when you start and there's a lot of uh spirits of black people down there and um they they're, they're um they're sad and honestly they're happy to see us because wow. they get a chance to talk but further down the road okay there's a tree where they call the hanging tree and at the, the hanging, hanging tree. tree yes that's where they hung people that is and sad it is it's very sad and it was very active on the k2 meters um we didn't really get too many evps um but just being there and just feeling the sense of pain hurt you know mm -hmm. sad yeah that nothing would... happened it was bad that would be sad well, and one more thing that happened real quick okay is that we saw a lot of shadow people Oh, shadow people, like we were talking about yeah. last week. Oh, shadow yes, ma'am. There was a lot of shadow people. No, there was, they were dark shadows. Um, yes. Were they, like, following you? Uh, they teased us. They oh, weren't following they were, us. They were fun. Crossing fun the road. And did you Crossing get pictures the of them? Um, right now, no one has gotten any yet. They're still looking over their photographs, but... Um, if anything pops up, we'll put it on our Yeah, uh, definitely. Page. We want to hear about those shadow people mm -hmm. for sure. Definitely. Um, I remember you mentioning on our Friday Night Live, you take over 400? Yeah, at the beginning shoots? we took over. Yes. Okay. Yes, at the beginning when we first started. And out of that 400 pictures, if we got one good picture that was legit, we were happy. Wow. Okay. 
That's good. Yes. Well, since you said that, the same but it's probably the same time you were out there taking pictures. I thought I'd give it a try in my own backyard. Okay. Mm -hmm. And I got some amazing shoots. I mean, I'm not kidding you. One particular was my tree. There's one tree. Mm -hmm. And when I looked at the tree, I didn't see it until after I went back and looked at the pictures. And what I saw what looked to me like an old man with a crook like a like a top hat that was crooked and he had a like a beard a long beard and a long chin he had big biceps a big thick torso and it really freaked me out and i did post it on chasing prophecies facebook page which i thought mm. i was hoping somebody would you know tell me what they thought about it but it I, was i saw the picture did you and see that it, Yes, and it was a very, very good picture. I mean, I examined that up and down, left and right, and um, there was something definitely there in the tree or beside the tree. Yeah, it was in you the know. tree. It was like inside the tree, which made it really ah. interesting. Yeah, and I, mm -hmm. I hope if anybody's listening out there, if they go to Chasing Prophecy, um, Pittsburgh Paranormal Chasing Prophecy Facebook page, and you know, scroll down until you find it, and if you have any thoughts on it, I'd love to hear about it. But when I when I did that, I thought about our next guest um, because there's a lot of creatures in my yard. Like I can see them, but other people can't see them. And I would like to think that they were fairies or some, maybe a few leprechauns or something. Um, creatures you can't <laughs> see with the naked eye. But I, I have a feeling that they're there. And our, our guest tonight knows a lot about mythological creatures. Um, Joy Elaine, is, she's our guest. She's an author, a speaker, and one of the most foremost experts in the world of, I hope I'm pronouncing this right, Ashtar Command, as well yep. as, good, <laughs> as well mystical mythical creatures that are real. Joy has her finger on the pulse of evolving Earth and has a profound understanding of nature and the 47 universes and many of the races that inhabit them. Joy's a master practitioner of SVH, Serenity Vibration Healing. She's an author of the Joy Chronicles, Return of the Dragons, Spaceship, Spaceship Earth, and Return of the Star Tribes. Joy, welcome to Chasing Prophecy. Yeah, thank you for having me on. I was interesting, interested in your conversation at the beginning here. Yes. Thank you. And you have met bird people, like you call them lion people, mm -hmm. um, a universe that is entirely feminine from the 46 other universes. And yeah, yep. Since we only have an hour tonight, and I want to discuss what are the mythological creatures that are real, their history, what they look like, what they do, and where they're located. But I also want to discuss the Ashtar Command, who they okay. are, okay. what they wow. do, <laughs> and where they and their ships look like, and the ability of the commander. So anywhere okay. you would like well, to start. I'm excited to tell Me you Me too. What I know. I'm excited to hear about it. So the floor is yours. <laughs> Well, let me tell you, first of all, where I get my information, because you would, you would want to know about the validity of what I'm telling you, right? Yes, absolutely. Mm -hmm. So the, the, the Serenity Vibration Healing that you mentioned, as well as some of the other esoteric practices I've done for about three decades, have given me the skills to actually move what you consider to be your energy body mm -hmm. uh, to different locations in our universe and other universes, and also in time. So at, at some point in, in my evolution, I will also be able to move my physical body. And I'm not just talking about me being able to do this. There are other people will be able to do that also because that's our path to evolution, to be able to move like teleporting, okay? Mm -hmm. um, so the creatures that I'm talking about, have e I've either seen them or they've been described to me by um, the people on, that I work with, and they are, these people are ascended masters. Or they're non-dual masters, which means non-dual people do not lie. Mm. That's just not that's not in their makeup. They don't have agendas that would be uh, trying to control people. They don't. They live. That's what we're evolving to: non-duality, where there's instant manifestation and there's um, no death. Oh. I know that's a biggie, yeah. right? But I'm going to talk about uh, these creatures that you in, were interested in because, mm -hmm. yes, they do exist. And some of them, many of them, actually, I worked with the fairies and with Gia, who is on the council that I work with. She's an, emb a, an embodiment of a representative of Earth. Mm -hmm. you, you might know her as Gaia, some people call her. 
lovely woman. Um, I work with her to bring back in book two of the of the series, which is called Blossoming of Love. There's actually six books, and you only mentioned, I think, two. Mm-hmm. But the second book, I work with her to bring back a lot of these mythical creatures that had either died off or been killed or were stolen from, to, you know, to take to other worlds. Mm-hmm. And, and the dragons were an example of that. They, the last dragon, they were actually killed off twice in Earth's history. The last one was killed in 420 A.D. But um, I love the idea of having dragons back, and so we brought them back along with, you know, quite a few other creatures. Now, where are they? Yes. Well, <laughs> yes, where are they? I like to Obviously, <laughs> you know, we didn't bring them back to where humans are existing because can you imagine the mass panic that would have ensued? Yeah, especially this time of year. <laughs> can you imagine the shootings, the, the, the jets, the, you know, the things that would have happened to dragons suddenly appearing in the sky? So we put them a little bit off of, of seventh dimension, like 7.2. Now, there are not really any humans living on se- seventh dimension at this point. We're all, all of us physically in a blend of five and six dimensions. But we thought that would be pretty safe. Well, it turned out in one of the later books that it wasn't, so we had to move them to another location completely off Earth. But at that point, there were like four million dragons returned. That was sometime in, I think, 2015. Returned to a dimension off Earth, all right, yeah. along with creatures like Centaurs, Centaurs. satyrs, you know, the horse, the horse mm-hmm. beings that have their, you know, a head of a horse, a head mm-hmm. of a human, or a, a human-like being in the body of a horse. Um, other creatures like something called Hopiana, which is like a butterfly that lives in the ocean, mm-hmm. they weren't restored, obviously, to the same, same dimension humans live on because, again, you know, mass panic, well, let's see if we can capture that centaur and put it in uh, an exhibition, or let's cut it open and see what it looks Mm -hmm. like inside. (laughs) Um, You know, one of these days when when we're all non-dual, those creatures will be back, and they will be be with us, interacting with us in a friendly manner. Okay? Really? That's interesting. That's that's pretty dang exciting for me. Uh Hmm. So, um, fairies. Well, Again, like like the dragons, fairies just a little bit live just a little bit off of of where humans are, and because they they used to be, you know, before humans started developing souls, they used to be able to interact more with more in the realm where where humans existed. But once once humans started having souls, which is about 120,000 years ago. Um, everybody had to leave Earth. Anybody that was here that was a galactic being, whether they were, quote, the good guys or the bad guys, had to leave because the galactic councils ruled it. They had to say, they said humans have to have the right to develop of their own free will without being coerced or manipulated in any way. So everybody off. And that's been that way for 120,000 years. Now, there were human-like beings before before that time, Mm -hmm. Um, you know, they were created as, as slaves to to mine crystals and, and gold. But um, hmm. that's a whole other story. <laughs> so very Can I share a story with you? Sure. Yeah, go ahead. Okay. Uh, when I got a divorce uh, 20 years ago, I was living over in a little borough called Pleasant Hills. And here, they, at that time, me and my wife ex-wife at the time we were sharing my son so outside my apartment they planted a garden vegetables and and uh flowers and such so one summer night i took my son out to the garden and all of a sudden we saw these little bright lights flickering off and on off and on off and on and i'm thinking ah they're probably lightning bugs but it you know it you know what a lightning bug looks like, but also um, they were acting kind of weird. They were moving weird. So the very next day, uh, we go back out and we saw a perfect ring of mushrooms. And I believe even to this day that these were fairies in that garden because of the, I mean, this thing was perfect circle of mushrooms. Mushrooms. And, um, Mm-hmm. It was called a fairy yeah. ring. I've never asked. I've never asked the fairies that I speak with about about that. But anywhere there's green, there's a fairy garden. 
mm-hmm. there are there are there are over twenty five million fairies and they're all over the earth. The only place you won't find fairies is the Sahara Desert, uh, the Antarctica and the ocean. Mm-hmm. They are even found as far north as the as the uh, Arctic Circle. So anything where there's green, even like in a desert that has enough greenery to support mm-hmm. a fairy garden, that's where they are. And there's not just one queen, there's every every garden has a fairy queen. Oh well. Wow. So I'm not, you know, I don't know about those lights. Other people have told me about that. <clears throat> um, there are so many things that exist that we don't know about yet. Yeah. Hmm. How do you know they weren't just lightning bugs? <laughs> you know, the lightning. Well, you know, how do you know that they weren't remote viewers? Ah. Hmm. People have the capabilities to do that and make the make things appear like, like uh, fairies. That's one of the things I've stumbled on in the past. A remote viewer? Yeah, oh. people that can see things at a distance, you know. Oh, okay. is that sort of like astro projection or not? No, that's just being able to tune in and see what's going on. At, uh, hmm. such and such that's really place. interesting. Such and such place. Usually people that are people that are doing really good things <laughs> sometimes have people like you know, they're not interested in doing good things watching them, but, you know, that's another whole other thing, there, too, that I... Is there a way to tell if if the fairies are there? I mean, in a, can you can't see them with a naked eye, right? N- not usually. But here's here's what you can do, all right? And, and, and it's going to be a little harder to do as the weather gets colder, but go outside, because if you've got anything green, you've got fairies there. Mm-hmm. And you just sit down and just... You know, maybe take a blanket, spread it out in the grass, and don't come and whisper in your ear. Wow. That's cool. That's cool. What's the difference between, okay, now you got, our like, fairies are good, right? I mean, they're not. They're all good. They're all that's good. One thing I want to, that's one thing I want to really clear up. None of the earth keepers, I'm talking about elves, dwarves, fairies, leprechauns, none of them are bad. So Those leprechauns are aren't, that's a big Myth. Well, they, they like to do little tricks, but they're not mean tricks. Okay. For example, um, I think um, one of the examples was if you, want, if you ask a leprechaun, you know, if you somehow want a leprechaun or somebody to, to plow your fields, they'll, they'll get someone to do it for you. So it's, it's fun. It's not, it's not evil stuff. It's not like, you know, st- not, not stealing children, none of that stuff. That's all complete and total baloney and self play hmm. because without the, without the fairies for example there wouldn't earth wouldn't exist it would be a dead planet hmm. I, be- I believe that to a certain degree i do well that's what gia told me so i'm, I'm taking her word for okay, it okay <laughs> let me ask you something about gia okay now do you go into a trance or do you do go into a meditation state to see her i sit here on my sofa I shut my eyes and I use the techniques that I've learned over those last 30 years and I transport myself mm-hmm. to, in this, starting in book two, to a council that's inside the earth and also one on the 10th dimension of the moon. In the first book, I'm, I'm traveling to an astronaut command spaceship. Oh. So, yeah. And, so, and at night, I see lots of things, too. And I see and hear things that I record on my little pillow, recorder that I keep under my pillow. And then I... And sometimes if there's enough stuff that's really scary, I take it to the council and they they do what they can to uh, ameliorate situations. And it's always approved by the Galactic Councils of Light. So I'm part of a big team. I'm part of, like, there were 86 million Ashtar command ships above Earth in 2014 when I started writing these books. Now there's triple that number, and they are spread through all the universes to assist people at whatever level they're ready to be assisted. Now, they do not come down in, to Earth unless they're in disguise, and they just come to observe. Because the Galactic Councils of Light have said, you are not allowed to advance a species beyond your readiness. Hmm. Hmm. So the ships that people see around here, like, uh, I haven't, I've seen some a long time ago, five lights just scooting across the sky, horizontal. My brother has seen a big spaceship. Those ships are mostly dual from dual worlds, and they're curious. They want to either they want to find out what's going on. They want to meddle. Um, 
they don't necessarily have our best interests in heart. Because mm. duality, you know what? Earth is a dual world. We're advancing out of that, but a lot of the worlds that a lot of the ships that sneak into here are dual plane from dual worlds. Wow. So Okay, yeah. for someone who doesn't know about the Ashtar command, uh, what is is this a person? Ashtar. Well, there is a commander Ashtar. Yeah, okay. And he's explain and he on how you Ashtar. met him and where how do you, do you how do you meet him? How do you talk to him? And where is he from? Like go ahead and tell us for the people okay, listening. Okay, so I met him through one of one of his command, Ashtar commander Tonas. In book one, which is called Path of Sweetness, okay. I, I've i been doing some work to assist work, uh, the earth, all right? That's that's where I just all started. And I heard from another healer about something the, the Ashtar Command was going to do to assist earth. And I thought, well, I, I've never heard of them. That sounds like really something important. So mm -hmm. I thought, well, I'm just going to visit. I'm going to visit an Ashtar Command station. And... And it's, if you think about, like, beam me up, Scotty, mm -hmm. only when there wasn't a Scotty. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm still sitting here on my sofa, but a part of me is also on this command ship. Mm -hmm. Does that make sense to you? So you teleported? I, I use what I call gating, which is like astral traveling, only more of my physical body is present than, than completely just the energy body. Okay, so your energy body left, but your physical body stayed on the sofa, right? Yes, right. Okay. So I'm in two places at once. Okay. And the part of me that's there looks like she's about 23. Now I'm 70, going to be 75 in February. So I didn't really know, I mean, I, I didn't see my face. I just looked down and I knew that I was in a really young body and I had this long, beautiful gown on and I thought, wow, this is really cool and I felt so great. And I see this stunningly handsome man and I'm thinking well this is another surprise I hadn't expected anything like that uh, literally the tall dark and handsome epitome of of that persona and and I wasn't till later like in the second or third book that I thought I asked another of the masters I work with why out of 86 million ships did I choose to step on that command ship and this master said, well, you've had like 786 incarnations with this Commander Tonos, and some of them you still have going because they're on worlds that where there's no death. So, it, you know, that's a big chunk of something to, to, take, to take in to mm -hmm. understand, but I felt such a connection with him immediately. Hmm. And I just sensed that we, you know... <laughs> He just, he was really taken with me, and I couldn't figure out why, because, you know, I didn't know him from Adam, but he, I learned later that he'd gone back in time, and he'd known me for a million years. So he'd been waiting for me for a million years to step on his ship. I'm like, okay. You know, it's, it's frankly, Jenny, it's mind-boggling stuff, even to me. Yeah, it, it, it sounds it. I'll, so they are, they look human? They are all non-dual. The Ashtar command ships and their crews are non-dual individuals, which means, again, they have, there are certain things that they're allowed to do with Earth, but they're not allowed to interact with us directly. Now, Commander Ashtar does sometimes change his appearance because you can change your appearance with a thought and just come down and have a cup of coffee and just observe, all right? But their hands would be slapped very strongly by the Galactic Council of Light if they tried to, quote, do anything to fix us or help us because we're not re get ready. We're not ready to see a spaceship land somewhere and, and you know, it, I, I just imagine the panic. Of course. Now, some people would go, oh, that's great, but other people would go, oh, my God, the aliens are here. Okay, you know, do they look like aliens or they do they look like you and me? They look beautiful. They're beautiful. The ones that I've seen. Now, some of them, some of them are different colors. Some of them are green. Some are mm -hmm. blue. Tonos looks like a human, fair-skinned human. He's, is he like a Nordic? Like an, a light-colored uh, alien? No, he's more like a really light. Um, he's not what they call like the golden skin ones, but he's just really fair. Mm -hmm. He has black hair and really dark eyes. He's about six foot tall. He just really looks like a human man. Um, I was reading that the first person that saw this was uh, George Van um, Tassel. He was the first one to see Ashtar. Do you know of him? I've never... I don't know of him. No. You don't know of him. Okay, because no. he, he's communicated with um, Ashtar. Now, let me ask you something. I watched a uh, alien, um, 
was a show on Amazon Prime with Bashar. Have you ever heard of someone by the from the Ashtar Ashtar Command uh, ship um, named Bashar? No, oh. I mean there's there's now if you imagine there were eighty six million ships mm -hmm. that's not that's not even with the crew. Okay, there are now triple that number, and so I mostly interact with just Tonos or Commander Ashtar. Now I've known a few others, um, two or three others that have that I've interacted with, but mostly those two, because they are the two supreme commanders. Okay. Do and they telepathically can commute with, commute with, uh, okay, so know, they, with they, anyone. Okay, so they telepathically communicating with you through channeling? Right. Are you channeling them? I'm, I am channeling them, but I'm also with them. Okay, so you, take, you, 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 take, okay, you leave your body and um, part of me leaves my body yes okay and you go on to the ship what do the ships right. look like uh they do they're not not the fancy things that you see like mm -hmm. the you know like the star wars things they're just mm -hmm. they're really like a saucer and they're they're crystalline so you can't see any windows but they have windows which they can see out of mm -hmm. and how big are they some of the ones some of them are as big as chicago Mm. Okay, and and they they're won't, all different sizes. They won't let us see them until they think that we're ready, right? Until they know we're ready, and mm. or until the Galactic Council might like, give them approval to ha interact with. Have them. you talked to them or communicated with them recently? Um, just a couple of days ago. I usually I usually visit the council a couple times a week. Okay, what do what do they think of what's going on right now in society with? all the rioting and um, unrest. What do they think of that? Well, I can tell you what Commander Asher told me. This is on my on my website, joeelaine.com. Okay. Uh, one of the blog, one of the more recent articles that I had that I have up. Uh, I asked him about the COVID thing, for example. Mm -hmm. And what did he and say? He, he, to, he said on the matter of the virus yes. that that is ready to fall aside. It's gonna go away? Yes. Well, that's good to and hear. You, the thing is, you have to see the virus stop. Whatever you focus on, you, you're, if, if you're moving into fear and you're thinking, oh, my God, when is this going to be over? And I just mm -hmm. can't, you know, all these people are dying, blah, blah, blah. You keep feeding that energy, that energy of fear. And that's, I haven't investigated who was behind it. I don't want to know that stuff. I want to focus on the positive mm -hmm. things. But he said, to sum up, here's what he says, a direct quote. It's my hope for the world that each and every person begins to focus within for how their life can elevate from this point forward. How they can look about themselves, see what they would change in order to help change the world, and allow themselves to become more in attunement with the heart of Yia, yeah. who is indeed their rightful mother. So it's focusing on what you desire, fueling what you desire. You want to see the virus stop, then see it stopped. Hmm. That would be nice if we could think like that. <laughs> well, you know, we're creating this reality. So we we're create our it. own reality. We do. That's that's the basic tenet of, of all the, the teachings. You're creating your own reality, and it's different for everyone. I Every every day I have the focus of I'm visioning it stopped. I'm saying I'm claiming that the virus stops, that the, that solutions are found, that the, that the truth comes forward, and I don't feed, I don't, watch the news and feed any fear to myself. I just be, be neutral about it. Hmm. And that, if enough of us do that, it will stop. Well, it would be a great way if we could do that. So Ashtar comes to you or you go to him anytime you want, or is there a specific time that you have to set well, aside? Well, sometimes he's, sometimes he's, he's too busy. Okay. You know, I mean, there is, with 47 universes, and Ashtar command ships in all of them, although really he is he is focused on Earth a lot because we are really the most important world in the everything. Mm -hmm. Now, how, if someone like myself would like to communicate with them, can I? Yes. And how would I do it? How would I go about doing this? Well, you, first of all, you, you need, it may take you a while because you need to get clear. You need to stop, stop the mind chatter. Uh, a lot of times, people that are meditating have a, have have more clarity, have more insight into what mm -hmm. their higher self or their soul wants them to do, or they turn in turn in more into your heart, 
rather than your mind. Mm-hmm. I mean, that's really the guidance that, that is most trustworthy is you feel into into yourself, you know, feel into your heart. That That's who I would suggest to communicate with, your higher self, your future self, because you do exist in the future. Mm-hmm. Sean, what are your thoughts on this? Um, I'm still trying to take it all in, Jenny, <laughs> to be honest with you. Well, I, you know, I, I just I feel personally like that too. What's that? I feel like that too sometimes. I stop and I read what I've written and I think, wow, it's so awesome. The magic that we have the potential to remember and to see and experience. And every day that's more of a possibility because we are, in spite of what's happening, in spite of everything in the news, in spite of the global warming, in spite of the fires, in spite of this and that, we are elevating. Hmm. Sean, what were you going to say? Well, I'm, I'm, see, to me, I I do astro projection, mm-hmm. and um, I don't go very far. And I I do respect what what you study. I do respect, but to be honest with you, I have a problem with the situation, and. Um, I'm trying to uh, I'm trying to understand it. Um, there's just so much here that I'm trying to learn. So, problem with the situation with what something specific that I've said? How to me it sounds like that you are just astral projecting, and because if your body if you're if you're sitting on the sofa and your energy body leaves how do you know you are going to that command center well i see the people there and i speak with them okay. it feels it resonates in my heart with with what okay. you're saying it it feels it feels like the truth so, and I did say it's like astral traveling, only there's a bit more of my physical body, not not the entirety of it, but there's more more substance to that that part of me that travels than just per, per, particularly astral traveling. Uh, what, what, why, how did you learn to trust whoever you visited at this command center? See, to me, I've been doing this for over 30 years now, and... Before I even astral projected, I had to learn who was protecting me right, when I would right. leave my body. Who's protecting you? I have a lot of, a lot of the serenity vibration healing work in place, and one of them is a shield for when I astral travel. Okay. So that I'm not I'm not corded to. I'm not, you know, entities are not allowed to attach to me. There's really magnificent stuff in that in the, on that website. It's called the joke the joy of life info is, is my serenity vibration healing website that's why I feel and it, that's why I feel I really feel safe because of all that work I mean <laughs> I've been studying that modality since 2003 and there were lots of other modalities before that that I studied so I, I understand that you need to be discerning um, because there, there's a lot of confusion out now about who's, what's the truth, who says this. And, but there's a vibration to truth that if you, if you get calm and you feel in your heart and you really, you know, kind of ask, is, is that really true? You'll be able to pick up on what, what rings true. And some people are very skilled at weaving in truth with lies. Mm-hmm. A form of mind control. So I do caution people to be discerning, feel feel is that truth have you asked and have you put in the protections that you know how to put in place like you know the white light of you know some people use the white light i just have a lot of shields in place there's like four levels of three vibration healing work that i've studied over the years so lots of precautions lots of you know i I don't just step out into the wild blue yonder and say here i am you know who's ready to talk to me i set boundaries aside that uh, this is the only people that i'm talking to i'm talking to non-dual people or ascended masters, or beings of light. I do not deal with, quote, the bad guys until they okay. push themselves right into me, and then I, I mean, they make themselves known to me, and then I take that information to the council. I don't deal with that personally. That's beyond my... How, how many people are on the... Are, are, what would they be called? Um, 
that are on well, the, peop- the, the people like on the council, yeah. on the Joy Council in Book Two. Um, well, a lot for a lot, quite a bit of a time, a lot of the uh, Native Americans. These these are quote dead people. But oh, course, okay, that's that's makes okay. Let me let me back up. Yeah. So the people on the Ash Ashtar command are dead. Nope, 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 nope. Not them. They're all alive. Okay. But the people that some of the people at the Joy Council are dead, like like um, John F. Kennedy. Oh, let's talk about John F. Kennedy. <laughs> well, this it's the ascended version of John F. Kennedy. So he is not the man with all the the karma, the the genetic programming, all the stuff that he had when he was alive. It's like having a clean state and then becoming like like Jesus would be an example, or any of the saints that we know. Okay. So it would be like a saint version of John F. Kennedy. Abraham Lincoln, Cleopatra, um, Mark Antony and Caesar. Um, and then people like the the Egyptian, we thought they were gods, but they were just non-dual masters. Osiris, mm-hmm. he's teal mm-hmm. color, by the way. Isis, who is a blue color. Hathor, who is, we sometimes see her pictured as a lion. Horus, who sometimes you see him pictured with the head of a hawk. Taught, who is sometimes pictured like with the head of an ibis, um, mm-hmm. they're still alive. They were they were helping the Egyptians thousands of years ago, and then they had to leave Earth because, you know, we became humans with souls, and <laughs> everybody had to leave. So, where do you go meet the them at the council? Where do you go when the, in book talk- two? It, the the, the, the Laponi, the genie that you meet in the first book. Mm-hmm. That I met in the first book. Mm-hmm. He creates, and by the way, it's, it is like they have in the movie. It's the instant creation. All right. He visualizes it, and then he just thinks it into being, which is what all non-dual people do, but he's really a master at it. So he created a council on the 10th dimension of our moon, and in the inner earth. There is a city in the inner earth that sometimes people call it Agartha. We're not right in Agartha, but we're next to it. We have our own little own little place there. And that's where the councils meet, two places. So it's not just the hundred or so people that sit at the main council table. There's actually millions of people from non-dual worlds that support the work that the Joy Council does. So I'm part of a team, a magnificent team that's comprised of the Joy Council people, people from non-dual world supporting us, and the Ashtar Command. I kind of want to hear more about the Ashtar Command. I don't know about you, Sean. <laughs> yeah, I do too. Well, those ships, for example, they don't have any weapons. They don't need weapons. Oh, well, I have a question from one of our chats. Um, they want to know, do they sit at a round wooden table, or is it more like... Um, you know, what kind of material is the, is the Well, we started out, it was modeled after after the round table because King Arthur and Guinevere and several of his knights are at the table with us too, if we got to mention them. But there's too many people to be round, so it's really a long oval table. And it, it was made from, from some of the woods of Earth. And the chairs are crystals. Uh, oh, pony crystal. Wanted to make crystal, like thrones, really. They're, they're really like thrones. One Laponi wanted to make it, since it's about Earth, or our focus is on Earth, although we're assisting all these other worlds. Um, he wanted to honor Earth with the crystals, so he secretly, he got Ashtar. To, they have small stealth ships, too. They don't have all have the big ships. Got Ashtar to come down and mine crystals from Earth to use for, you know, he could have created them, but he wanted the actual physical things from Earth to use for the chairs around the table, so really cool setup okay i got two more questions from the chat sean does this sound familiar tara wants to know uh yeah tara it does it does a little bit um we have to talk about that later on okay and um johnny johnny wants to know are these books you mentioned are they still available yes yes johnny they're still com and um the first the first Four are available. I've rewritten five and six, and there will eventually be four more. Well, let me ask you something about the Ashtar Command. Now, he these are good. These are good. Um, yeah, they're all good guys. They would all be, non-dual. These are like extraterrestrial biological entities. They are. Yes. Okay. Now, 
do they ever speak of mali- uh what's that word again Sean? come on help me one always have our- malevolent malevolent <laughs> malevolent malevolent yes malibin. yes are they evil um do they have do they know of any aliens that are not you know friendly out there that- oh yeah we we got them here on earth oh they're already here yeah, well, they look like they they were here before humans were. And what do they look like? They can look human, but their true form is like um like an upright crocodile. Oh, like a, like a reptilian. Yeah, reptilian. And do they ever show themselves to people, or is, are they are they have their own like community, or are they living with with among us? The majority the majority of them live underground, and they those are the ones that stay in their quote their their reptil their crocodile form. Many people in power, and I'm not. I haven't asked who, so I don't. I can't answer it. Like, oh, this person is, and this person mm-hmm. is. But many people in power are have have those genetics. You mean like in power now on Earth? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Oh, like anyone we know? Come on. <laughs> I I I purposely Adam I never no. never asked Nancy because Pelosi. I don't want to know. <laughs> don't go there. Okay. Um. Okay, so let me swing a little bit because uh, we don't have too much time left, but I wanted to swing. Okay, so mythological creatures. What about um, the, the people? Um, there's some people see these creatures in the woods that are like Bigfoot. Is there anything like that that you know of? Yes. And it, yes, there is, there is Bigfoot. And it, they're very shy. They're shy. And the reason that they're hard to find is because they, just like the Loch Ness Monster, they can shift dimensions. They can shift just a little bit of off. They're curious, so they, they come and kind of look, but then they, oh, whoop, and then and they shift right back out. So, <laughs> you know, they're, they're harmless. They're harmless? They're just curious. Yeah, they're just curious, so... You know, you can search all you want, but gosh, I hope nobody ever catches one because I, I don't just think it would be a good time, a good thing. That's the second person. Uh, Stan Gordon said that they weren't they weren't dangerous either. Um, no, uh, uh-uh. no. And so in the Loch Ness monster, there's about they can shift off of off the dimensions where humans can see. There's about actually about thirty of them. Osiris mm-hmm. told me. Oh, thirty of them. Yeah. Different ages. What about the ones that are supposedly evil, like the um, Skinwalker Branch or anything like that? Well, you know, I don't, I don't know. You mean Loch Ness monster? No. Are there any creatures out there in, within the um, the Earth that are evil or like there, there's a Skinwalker Ranch? These are um, creatures of the night that are, aren't very nice. And they hurt people, like well, Mothman, like Johnny said, like Mothman. I have not asked about anything like that. I'm just dealing with there's like four, over four billion. The race that is reptilian is called they call themselves the Chew, C A Chew. I spelled Chew, it in my book. The Chew, Chew, yeah. And uh, that's the main race that I deal with. Now there are other inimical races. There are. There are long-lived humans, like humans that are 900,000 years old, that, that uh, th- there's just a lot of stuff going on. There seems and that there's a lot focus- of stuff going on in the universe, huh? Right. I try to focus on what is good. I try mm-hmm. to focus on dealing with, you know, stuff comes to me, and I take it to the council, and they say, you know, here. And there's a lot of stuff that's happened that's been, quote, rewritten, because with Serenity work, you can travel back in time and change things. Mm. Time travel. Mm. That yep. came to my mind. Hmm. So these council people, um, you you meet with them on a regular basis, right? Yeah, usually a couple of times a week and oftener if something comes up that scares me. <laughs> like what, sca- like what, like, what, what would scare you? Like, like you know? uh, the Palladians coming down to earth to take us over. Oh, those. No, who are they? Because then they're, the, they're not the very nice. They're not nice, are they? No, they're not. Well, they're like Earth. They're a dual world. So we got really good people here, you know, and then we got people that are not so evolved. Uh, is it, did, did, um, I was reading um, that, the, how do you say them again? The Palladians. Uh, Palladians. Palladians. They use, Pla- they, they're the ones who actually inhabited, and they're the ones who brought human beings here. Is that they are one of the races that were involved in creating human yes, beings. Yes, creating right. human beings. Right. Also the Anunnaki. Yes, the Anunnaki. Anunnaki, seven foot tall, like grasshoppers. 
and they're still mm. they still exist. Yes, they and still exist. Do they come but come into our solar system? Happened. Here's what happened: 120,000 years ago, when humans started getting souls again, this mm-hmm. is going back to that thing information. The Galactic Councils of Light said you have to give, you have to leave. The Pleiadians had to leave. The Anunnaki had to leave, and there were four other dual plane races that were involved in creating hum, early humans. Mm-hmm. Early humans programmed to live 32 years and then die. They were just completely like, uh, just like cows, only worked, all right? Mm-hmm. So once we, once we started developing souls, they had to get off. Now, here's what happened. The Pleiadians said, well, wait a minute. We want to have, we want to ha- be able to monitor the, uh, the progress of the individuals who have some of our genetics. Mm-hmm. So what happened was a code, they, they were allowed to do that, and the Ashtar Command must allow them to come. So, so, so for 120,000 years, the Pleiadians are the ones that abduct and implant human beings. Oh, okay. So they they sounds like they today's do. what world, huh, Jenny? Yeah. yeah. They, they do hundreds of thousands of individuals a year, according to Commander Ashtar. They why, do people, why don't people say anything? Well, it's done when they're asleep. And it's such a dream-like thing that a lot of people forget it, or they just assume that it was just some crazy dream, and they don't like want to say sleep anything. paralysis. <laughs> yeah. Yes. Wow, right. this is amazing stuff. Um, Joy, um, what is the main message um, you want of your books that you want to tell people? Your the, what is the main message of your books that you want to? Earth is magic, and so are you. Oh, that's very oh, nice. Thank you. <laughs> Earth is magic, so are you. I like and that. So are you? I like that a lot. <laughs> We are remembering more and more that we are magical beings. You know, magic is the instant instant creation creation of anything you desire, and that's what we're evolving to. Wow! And um, what what will readers get out of these books? You think? Hope, a laughter, enjoyment, excitement. They are invited to be part of the work we do. It's explained in the back of each book that's how they can take part in the energy work we do to, to have their share in voting how they want the world to be because we are creating our Earth. We're all individually and collectively creating our Earth. And I see, Gia herself has told me that in, when we are non-dual, there's no pollution. There's crystalline cities on Earth. The air is pure. The water is pure. She's going to bring back the dinosaurs. They're going to be mm. friendly. I mean, all the plants that we've killed, all the species that we've made extinct that are coming back. I mean, it's you talk about paradise on Earth. That is what is in our future. Well, that sounds like a wonderful future. Does uh, Ashtar know anything about the election coming up? <laughs> Does he know? <laughs> <laughs> I knew that was coming. I knew that was yeah, coming. I didn't. I didn't talk about that because okay. I, I'm. You know, I, I maybe should. I don't really. I don't watch the news. Okay. I just keep. I just keep focusing on the vision that I have of Earth at peace. Well, that's of, a good. That's of, a good thing. But if you do of us loving each other, loving ourselves, and loving each other, and taking waking up, because you know it's not up to the Pleiadians to help us clear up Earth. It's up to us. Yes, it is. Yes, it is. And well, if you ever get any contact with him, and email me what he says, <laughs> okay. But um, unfortunately, we're getting we're getting close to the time that we have to um, head on out. Um, but I want to make sure we get to send before we have to say goodbye. So, um, Joy, if someone wants to get get in touch with you or learn more about your books, where would they go? JoyElaine.com. They can email me from my website. There's lots of information about each book. There's a page of highlights about each book, so you can just kind of peruse and see. Oh, that looks interesting. They are chronological, but I tell people, you know, buy whichever one or you know, investigate whichever one speaks to your heart. Oh, great. Well, Joyce, thanks for joining us tonight. It was a delight. Yeah, Joy, thank you. It was a delightful and very interesting. And so next week's guest is um, Terry Lynch. She is from MUFON. She's, we're going to talk about um, the latest uh, UFO sightings and what she, what she can give to the round table too. And Sean, tell our audience where someone can get in touch with you if they're interested in having a paranormal investigation. Yeah, sure. Um, just go to Facebook and go to the Pittsburgh Paranormal Society page. Send me a message and we will get back to you. 
great. And I want to let everyone know that my books, Aurora's Curtain, well, let's start from the beginning. From the Sky, Equinox, Aurora's Curtain, has been optioned for a movie, a motion picture, and I would love for you guys to read the books before they are on the big screen or on Netflix. So you can go check that out at Amazon.com. And next week, um, everything paranormal is not going to happen on um, Friday Night Live. We're not going to be doing that um, next week. We're going to try doing it every other week. So I'll let mm -hmm. you guys know when we're going to do it. Remember to like us on Facebook and Instagram. Check out and subscribe to ChasingProphecyRadio.com on YouTube. And we look forward to your ghostly stories. We had one today. You can go to Chasing Prophecy to learn about it. And email your story to ChasingProphecyRadio at gmail.com. And Stay safe. Good night, everyone. And thanks for Good night, in everybody. To Chasing Good night. Prophecy. Bye bye. Bye bye. You're clear, guys. Thanks. Right. Hey, if you guys got any questions, just email me. Oh, yeah, definitely uh, will. Thank you, Joe. It was a will. pleasure having you. It was really interesting. You have a great night. Thanks, Joe. Thank you. You too. No, no problem, guys. Have a good night. Thanks, John. Too, bye -bye. I'll see you, Jen. Okay.